Today's guest is an author, a psychic medium, and hypnotherapist specializing in past life therapy and karmic healing, working with clients all over the world. She's also known as a psychopomp, spirit rescuer, and paranormal photographer and investigator. She has since been guided to utilize her gifts and abilities to help others heal and realize their true self. Let's welcome today's guest, Sharon Sananda Kumara. Welcome, Sharon. Oh, thank you, Adam. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. I, I'm very interested in the subject of personal growth, expansive expansion in terms of our consciousness, as well as, you know, investigating and learning about what lies beyond this universe, uh, mm -hmm. alien contact, UFO sightings and stuff like that. And more so the fact that a person has the ability to experience uh, an aspect of an NDE or NDEs uh, in their lives and, and, and receive a spe specific type of information or certain message that comes through that actually enhances the person and, and, and gives the opportunity for that person to spread, you know, spread a word of, of love and in a higher level of, of consciousness. And you're, you, for example, had, had two NDEs. And as I've in, mm -hmm. interviewed different people, I've recognized the fact that sometimes when a person has an NDE as an adult, through that adult NDE, they then recall the child NDE that they experience. And that happened. Oh, in, okay. Yeah, that happened in, in your case as well. Maybe you could just bring the mm -hmm. audience back to a little bit of maybe your childhood of in terms of if it was there a sense of spirituality, religion in your home and, and where you came from. Sure. Okay, so I was, uh, my parents divorced when I was six. And before that, there was, I was raised Catholic, but my parents were not good Catholics. So I wasn't raised that way. And uh, we spent some time after the divorce with my mother, who was also not, uh, we didn't go to church or anything like that. And then we went to live with my grandmother, my sister and I, uh, when I was about nine, eight, around eight or nine in between those years. And I, uh, my grandma was very Catholic, very strict Catholic. And I used to fight her because we had to go to church every day except Saturday. And I used to, <laughs> and I, I feel so bad afterwards when I think about it, I, I would fight her not to go to church because I did not want to go to church. It was so boring to me, to me. Okay. Right. Uh, and she used to fall asleep in church, which was really funny, but she called it meditating. So that's okay. And then <laughs> when we'd call her on it. Right. So I was not what you would call a good Catholic. I didn't, I didn't resonate with the teachings that where I was, uh, where, what I was hearing about that God is judgmental and that, uh, you know, we're being judged for everything and that kind of thing. Uh, and so, and also I couldn't relate to the, the Jesus and the saints that were put on this pedestal and that we had to communicate with them through clergy and things like that. So, so it wasn't anything in my wheelhouse that I resonated with. So I uh, grew up uh, that way. And then also as a child, I didn't remember most of my childhood as an adult. And my, my sister and I would talk about it. She remembered more than I did, but I'd heart, I had huge gaps in my childhood. And uh, so we, um, I didn't really have, my sister and I didn't really have a foundation or stability in, as growing up because right. we would, because of my parents, we moved around a lot and things like that. So yeah, that was right. Basically, my childhood. So, in in terms of in terms of your um, near death experiences, I guess in two thousand one, uh, you had an experience mm -hmm. that then brought you back to the 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 lapses that had had taken place. Maybe you could just describe what happened in in two thousand one. Sure. Okay. Well, I was I lived in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, when I was a, I grew up in Oregon, where I'm back home in Oregon now. And in San Antonio, Texas, my girlfriends and I went uh, tubing down the Guadalupe River River in New Braunfels, Texas, and we had a really good day. We um, it was for a friend's birthday, and at the end of the day, the shuttle bus came to pick us up, which was a little school bus, uh, to take us back to the the outriggers uh, establishment so we could pick up our cars. And when I went to get on, I was the first one of our group i went to get on the bus and i noticed it was full but they said come on let's you know we'll just pack up everyone in so i got on and there was five of us and i was the first one in my group and i was up against the back door but i wasn't against it i was just 
it was there. My back was to it. And as, as the driver is driving down the road in New Braunfels, um, he's shifting through gears. It's a small manual drive bus. And it was second or third gear. I don't recall as he's moving away from a, a street light, a uh, stoplight. Uh, he jerks it so bad that I fall up. I am thrown up against the back door and I fall out. The, the door pops open and I fall out. Right. And so I uh, bounce off the, the trailer hitch that's pulling a trailer. Also, I forgot to mention that the, the bus is pulling a trailer that has all our inner tubes and, and ice chests and everything like that in it. One of those uh, trailers that you haul things in. And so, so I bounced off that. I bounced off the um, trailer hitch onto the pavement underneath the trailer and bounced again onto my side. And, and I remember screaming him. I remember first thinking, I can't believe I'm, <laughs> I'm falling out of the back of this bus. I can't yeah. believe this is happening. And then when I um, was on, I remember being on my side and thinking very clearly and yelling in my head, stop. <laughs> I was yelling to the driver in my head, stop, you're killing me. I knew, I knew that that was going to happen. And as soon as I said that uh, the back wheel ran over my neck and my head and that's when I popped out of my body. I didn't feel any pain at all at that point. It was just a knowing. Right. And then it happened. And then I, then it happened. Yeah. And so I popped out and um, I'm looking, I'm floating above my body and it was pretty instantaneous that I knew right away that I was, um, that I had died. And so I'm looking down at my body and I um, think, well, gosh, here we had such a really good day and uh, my friends, this is really going to ruin my friend's day because <laughs> we had a, an amazing day and here I go and die on them. That's what I'm thinking in my head wow. that here I go and die and we had such an awesome day. So that was my first thought that I recall. And, and then I remember seeing a big uh, commuter bus driving up because there was still the traffic was, he was still pulling away. The driver was still pulling away. And this bus is driving up to, um, to where I, I could see my body laying there. And I was thinking that I hope that bus doesn't drive over my body because that would really make a mess. But I had felt no attachment to my body. I was thinking that would mess my body up even more. And, uh, and I felt no attachment to it. I knew that it was just my vehicle, my body. Yeah. But I just want to and stop was... you, just stop you at that point before you yeah. proceed. So what's sure. interesting, what's interesting sure. is the fact that through, through your eyes, right. Looking at your body, you're recognizing at the fact that, uh, the, the sense of acceptance is, it seems like you're in that state of acceptance first off. Yes. And the second yes. thing is, second thing is you're in a state of concern more about what you're friends are thinking rather than you leaving, leaving the, the, this earthly plane. So that's an interesting concept because you hear from people who describe near death experiences, they were worried about what the nurse was thinking or what the family was mm -hmm. thinking and how you want the person wanted to comfort them. Is that, was that the feeling that you had? Yes, definitely. Because my, and my thoughts wandered to my, uh, to my ex boy, or he's my ex now, but my boyfriend at the time right. and how he was going to take, you know, my inner circle on how, how it was going to be for him. And I was taken to that, that awareness that he would be okay, that he he'd grieve for a while, but he would be okay. And then my thoughts went to my sister and her family. And I, and I, um, felt the same way. And I went to her, I knew that it would be, cause we're best friends. And I knew that we would, um, that it would be really tough on her, but that she had her family and she would be okay. So I had all those awarenesses and I could feel, and I knew what the, the grief they were going to have to deal with. So I was actually taken on that timeline, I guess you could say. Right, right. And I knew that, yeah, that they were going to be okay. I didn't feel the need to go comfort them at that point or not what I remember. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I, I knew I had a knowing that they would be okay, that they would be able to move on. And then I thought about my, my mother, my mom, who um, I was very close to, and she was elderly and we lived close and I helped take care of her and that type of thing. Um, and so I, 
when I thought about her, I felt a presence to my right. And my stepfather had passed in 98, just uh, three years earlier, because this was in 2001. And, you know, and I was really close to my stepfather too. And he kind of, when he passed, it kind of started everything for me. Um, the NDE was just basically the topper. <laughs> and so I, and I turned and I saw my stepfather and I was really happy to see him. And he, and I tells me right away, it's not your time. And I, and I was disappointed. I remember feeling just really disappointed. And I said, but I want to be here with you. I want to stay. I want to stay. And I didn't quite understand that. So, and it, and our communications are telepathic and, and as we're communicating, there's another presence to my right. And I see a portal open up, which was kind of blue gray portal. And I see beings within the portal it's difficult to describe the uh, what you know how we're perceiving these things because uh, it wasn't in 3d it was more multi-layered type of thing and so i see beings in the portal who i recognize as my ancestors and some i know on this earth plane that know here that i recognize and some that i wouldn't recognize here but i know are my ancestors or part of my soul group, right, I guess right. you could say. Right. And so, and, and I'm, and I'm have the, these thoughts are all coming at once that, well, they don't look happy to see me. So I guess something's up that I start to realize maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Maybe it like my stepdad was telling me it's not my time. And I'm, and so all these awarenesses are coming to me. <clears throat> and as I'm realizing that and I'm moving toward the tunnel, and my stepdad is next to me and he's guiding me a little bit. He's standing next to me. I see a much larger portal in the, off in the distance and it's golden white, golden, like the sun, it looks like the sun, um, golden white. And it's huge. It's large. It looks like I'm looking at the sun, but my eyes don't hurt. I, there's, um, it's just immense light. And as I'm gazing at that, that portal, I see a figure step out of that portal and come moving toward me. <clears throat> and, um, and the figure is wearing uh, the typical white robe type of um, tunic type of uh, clothing. And I recognize him right away as Jesus, I call it Yeshua. And, and as soon as I recognize him, I fly to him. I just fly to him and um and he embraces me i embrace him it's automatic even though i did not have that connection with him i mean i had a connection we all do of course and um but i didn't have that connection conscious connection before then i was a partier you know and and um that was kind of my life. I worked a, you know, I, I worked a job and in, um, in the corporate world, and then I'd party for, you know, for my in my off time, free right. time. I didn't really have any spiritual, um, any type of spiritual longings. Right. I knew that there was some powerful being, God that we call God, that was probably taking care of me because I probably should have died a lot long, many times before that. Right, right. <laughs> the situations I had got myself into. And so, uh, so, so I fly to him and, and he tells me the same thing. It's not your time. And so I'm, I'm kind of arguing with him and saying, well, I, I want to stay with you. And then I, his, his, uh, laughter, his ch he chuckles, he laughs. And so it's, a, it's like a, um, understanding, like, I know, I know, but it's not your time, that type of thing. And I remember him so clearly that what I remember so clearly are his eyes. And when he looked at me and these are things are difficult to express without that emotion coming up yes, again. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, when he looks at me and I'm in his grace in his energy field in that of um, his immense light, uh, there's, there's nothing that I could have done or say um, in my experience that that I would that I might feel guilty about that 
would have made him not love me and not, it, it, there's no forgiveness to be had. There is no, for, there is no forgiveness that needs to be had. And I knew that with him. And, um, and so uh, I just, uh, everything's just washed away. It's just washed away when, when you're when, with him. When, when because you, he, he sees yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when you when you were in his in his presence, uh, were you able to have your own self dialogue with yourself? Like, in other words, revert back to the the imagery or the experiences as a child where you questioned uh, the the religion from, from the religious standpoint. Was there any self dialogue, or was it just being in the present moment and not having any rec recollection of your pre existing interpretations of this figure in this this encounter? Right. There was at that moment that, that I recall, okay, there was no um, memory of my childhood of anything that I would have, you know, with the religious and things like that. Um, and, and I recall this later on, okay, because it was my experiences in my, my experience yes. was so intense and so profound for me, right. okay, personally that there's no way I could have been able to hold that in my uh, consciousness when I came back to the body all at once. So it had to come in, um, in increments, that type right, of right, thing. Right. I would spontaneously combusted or had, um, a lot more psychosis, <laughs> um, than, um, yeah. So, uh, and so in answer to your question, no, I didn't recall those things, um, in that way. Now, you know, we all go through life where we th have things that we're, that we feel bad about, where we said something mean to someone or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, or did something we're not, you know, proud of whatever it is. Uh, it's not that they came to mind. It was more like, I didn't feel. And when I came back in, in the physical world, uh, I still didn't feel worthy of his graces of his love. I didn't feel that there. I did hear. Okay. And it had to do with not this life, but other lives as well. You okay? will get into that. And yeah. he took me on that journey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He oh, took me on that journey. I was going to ask you in, in terms of, uh, in terms of the account encounter, was it a telepathic communication or was it just a, a, a verbal hearing, um, outside the body or outside the experience? Or? It was, it was, an, it was a knowing, a knowing okay. it, it wasn't in words. It was just a, um, is a merging where he would, he helped me see myself, see me and the, my soul, he was mirroring my soul to me and helped me move through all of that thing. Anything that I would have felt ashamed of right, right. or held any type of, um, anger, you know, or, or, or grief, even anything that, uh, you know, toward, toward him, toward God. Cause I saw a lot of times where I was mad at God. I was mad at him, you know, that kind of thing Yeah. for, um, things. And so, and lots of, you know, lots of all of that, that we hold within our, you know, our memory, within our records. And so all of that was clean, wiped clean when I was in his embrace and in his, uh, light because there was a merging there where I was washed clean I guess you could say right, right? um and uh and I feel that that's what healed my body too when I came back right? yeah so yeah. It, so from this encounter you um I've heard other interviews where you speak about the water planet that you were taken to or shown yes. and you were in the family itself can you just maybe yes. you know expand upon that that's an interesting interesting topic Sure. Sure. And I've heard from, uh, and since I've been sharing that, I will say real quick that uh, I've heard from other people that have sent me messages that they've had also had memories of a water planet and um, they didn't, they hadn't heard anyone talk about that before. And I understand people, there are some people out there that are talking about it publicly now too. Um, but, but so I was yeah. going to just, I'm, 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 I have thoughts that come into my mind, which are pretty, pretty accurate for this. So in other words, in this plane itself, have you had an, an, a, 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 a positive experience with water? 
swimming or being in the water? Do you have, are you drawn to the water in this life? Uh, uh, pretty much most of my life I've lived near the water. I love the water. I love swimming. I, I've i always called myself a mermaid since I can remember as, um, as a young adult when I started uh, remembering things. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just something I was always drawn to, but didn't know why. Right. you know, and came across Doreen Virtue, who talks about mermaids and mermaid people and stuff like that. And um, um, so things just started. Coming. And also, I've had many out of body experiences, even before my NDE, because I started having out of body experiences when my stepfather passed, of where I end up in water, and I'm an aquatic being. And I'm see myself and I look down and I see myself and I'm like, Oh man, my body is so strong. It's like, and I'm, cause I'm conscious as me, Sharon. And I'm like, I can't believe how strong my body is. I can just feel how strong my body is. And it's amazing to me. And so I, I've seen myself that way with, um, with a child and, and, um, and with dolphin beings, uh, already. So, um, but with this experience, uh, I was able to spend a lot of time there. And uh, so Yeshua uh, tells me that it's not my time. And he asked me if I want to go on a journey. And I tell him yes. And he puts his hand out and uh, um, for me to join him. And I take his hand. <clears throat> and uh, and again, I've shared this a couple of times that uh, his hand, it was so intense to have my hand in his hand that I could feel it was so it was more than what we can feel here in the physical. It was, uh, I could feel every single line or crevice in his hand. And I've, and I've pondered on that um, also is, is, you know, um, and had conversations with him. What, you know, what is, what are these lines about? You know, wouldn't a palm reader love to, <laughs> to look at Yeshua's lines and, you know, on his hand and that kind of thing. And, um, and I've got, you know, a couple answers that it, it could have been a mirror of my hand. It could be that he, he holds the sorrows and the, and the, um, um, and I've heard this, um, communication too. He holds a lot in his hand of, of humanity in, in his yeah, yeah. hand. Okay. And that's what I was feeling very strongly. Cause I didn't, I've, I've heard people say that Yeshua has appeared to them with the with the spike or the hole in the hand or the wrist or something like that. And that was not at all how I, how I saw him. There was nothing there that I felt except like the, the trail of tears, I guess you could say. And, and so, and also the joys of, um, of what a palm or the hand shows us. Right, right. I, that's what I felt. And, and I also felt that we all hold that within us too, since we all are one. Right. <clears throat> and um so i went with him we went through the immediately we're um moving through the cosmos flying it's it's such a free feeling and it's hard to express and we're moving through the cosmos and i've said before or the cosmos is moving through us i don't know because you know are we really moving anyway <laughs> right, right, right. as we learn more and more about the workings of the universe of that kind of thing and i see these lights flying by i'm assuming are stars and planets and different colors uh, and then i see a and then we start to slow down and i see a blue light off in the distance and i know i see as we move closer it's a it's another portal it's a portal and it's it's beautiful blue like a turquoise blue and um and we move into that portal and there's a planet what i recognize as a planet it's an orb um planetoid what i recognize as we're communicating telepathically and again it's not really in words and i notice it as this what is covered with water okay this beautiful turquoise colored blue colored water and before and we're hovering above and before we move down i connect with the planet with the consciousness of the planet and i am i am um i i feel so much 
love and compassion for every every um, thing, every living consciousness, all the consciousnesses on my body. Right, right. It's um, yeah. I just feel so much love for them, and I feel their love for me. But I just feel so much love for my, for everything that makes up my body. <clears throat> I see everything on the planet is what makes up my body. Okay, they are part of me. I'm merging with that consciousness and having this awareness. And then as I come, as I'm moving through that and enjoying that and understanding that, uh, we come back to where we're above the planet, where I'm sharing and, and with Yeshua. And then we're moving down to the planet and we dive into the water and I'm reintroduced to my aquatic family and it's i guess you could call it a reunion but it's but then it starts to become where i almost like never left <laughs> wow. i see my family and so i start um, becoming um part of them and, and and my earth life starts to move away from my consciousness and i'm reminded at some point that i need to uh, return that my goal, my mission, my job is to return back to earth. And I, and I said this many times, is I don't know how long I was there. I don't, it could be that I spend a lot of time there. And Yeshua did tell me that I can go there in my meditations if I want to, because we can explore, of course, our other realities. Right. And, um, and so I was doing that afterwards when I came back, I was exploring the first thing I would want to do is I would just automatically go because it was so, um, so, uh, such a longing for me to be there in that, in that space. Yeah. I wanted to and ask they, you, but they had to keep bringing me back. Cause I kept, I went, we kept going there all the times so they kept bringing me back. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, in terms of saying it's familiar to you, the, the scenery yeah. was the scenery was familiar the feel was familiar the people were familiar in terms of what they look like or they the, the just being in a sense of comfort what was the what was the sense of home the whole experience everything everything the beings themselves the soul uh the planet because we're in community we are in total connection with the planet we're in connection with um each other we're in connection with um with the beings in the ocean there's that um, that telepathic and, and more of a, um, uh, a, a automatic communication where you're all at one and you know that you know that you're all at one with everything and everyone. Yeah. So from so from, so from this point, you're you're in this in this this portal in this realm and you recognize it as being familiar to you. And at what point do you do you leave? At what point do you go back, or from, do you go back from there? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I ju I just know that I'm back in my body. Wow. Back. Yeah. I don't recall. I do recall having the conversation with Yeshua, though. At what point? I'm not sure. Uh, that okay. I'll go back. I agree. <laughs> I agree because I understand we have to agree, kind of thing. Um, I'll go back, but. You have to promise me that I will consciously remember you here and that you will be by my side and we will work together on a right, you know, that way to where I remember you. Okay. And um, he's like, deal. So interesting. <laughs> so, it's really, so then I'm back. Yeah. So, so your, your name that you is Sharon Sunanda Kamara and Sunanda Kamara, if you can interpret that or Tell the audience what that means and the breakdown of the words and the energy of it. Sure. I remembered that name after I remembered my NDE as I was working through that because I still remember things as I'm, um, I mean, I journal everything and as I'm putting putting all these pieces together for for a um, for a book, which is basically for me because it ties everything together for me and it helps me dive deeper too. Um, I remember that name after working with Yeshua very, very um, intensely with him. I made that promise to him as we started communicating with each other on a regular, um, when I realized, and I got past that, that ego thing and that 
get past the pain of um and the trauma of not feeling worthy of him and his presence there with me and that he's actually working with me on a one-to-one kind of thing with me on on that basis right. and it, he, he has time for me you know how we always say well you know why would jesus be working with me you know i'm just a i'm, I'm just just a bookkeeper in San Antonio, Texas, you know, that kind of thing. And so, so I had to get past that. He had to help me get past, get through that. And, um, and so once I started that, I, I made a commitment with him that I would be in my room every night at nine, nine o'clock for meditation with him. And I was, I, I was very true to that commitment, still committed to him. And, um, and so, uh, I'm sorry. What was your question? No, no. Answer, I, I was just answering in terms of how you, you came upon that name, and now you explained to me the significance of him. Oh, in the Sananda Kumara. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then I came across um, uh, some uh, some writings or, or some websites or something like that with, that I feel that he helped me that he drew me to that um, that mentioned that Sananda Kumara was the name of of the Yesh, of Yeshua in the higher planes. That there's a Kumara brothers. <clears throat> okay, and that really resonated with me. And I um and so as I was working with him and I had moved through, I mean, I, I went through what he calls a quickening, which a lot of I've noticed that that's a lot of people have had in NDEs um go through a tough time afterwards when we come back. Okay. And so this was definitely a tough time for me. Right. I had um my mom passed not long after and uh and um and then my biological dad and I was going through a breakup and things like that. So there was a lot and my job wasn't working. So a lot was going on where, and, and in my meditations, I was digging in deeper where all these things were coming up. My childhood, I remembered my childhood, things in my childhood. And, um, and so I was going through what he called a quickening. My guides call a quickening and Yeshua called, or what now I understand was probably a Kundalini, Kundalini awakening. And then I, um, he took me on a, on a, um, in a meditation, he helped me understand that the name I had earned that name, Sharon Sanana Kumara. Okay. Uh, cause working with him intently and working with that line that, um, that name was Sharon Sanana Kumara is taken all the way to the Godhead. That frequency is recognized in every frequency all the way to the Godhead is what I understood and what he helped me uh, understand. And so what it means to me in that context is that Sharon is the feminine, Sananda is the masculine, and Kamara would be the whole within the whole of um, God, source, yeah. that type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, many people experience past lives, and some of the past mm -hmm. lives they experience are directly tied into some of the things that we need to learn in the present life, in the, the, the life we're experiencing. Um, you had a life I heard as a nun in a past life that you mentioned, uh, and yes, impactfully, the story you're telling has some type of, uh, you know, um, relationship to that in terms of what you needed to overcome or what you needed to get closer to. And maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yes. Yes. I remember one of the first lifetimes he helped me remember was when I was a nun. My name was Sister Elizabeth. I remember that. And... Uh, and it was, um, I believe it was in France or England. It was in Europe somewhere. I'd have to look back at my notes. But she she entered the convent young, and she wanted a closer relationship with God. And she ended up having this telepathic relationship with Yeshua, with Jesus, and like I have now. <clears throat> And it was, and I remember very clearly sit, our favorite place to communicate and sit and talk was in the garden. We sit in the garden, the rose garden, and we'd um, walk through the garden and sit and talk. And I could hear him very clearly, just like I did then. Now it's more my thoughts when, when it's a communication with him, but I could hear his voice very clearly with me, see him in my room. And um, my room was my classroom in this lifetime. So in that lifetime, as Sister Elizabeth when I had that uh, that relationship with him, I um, it was during a time when we we're not supposed to be able to have those types, you know, 
telepathic come on really you you know uh, that was something that was frowned upon and so I made the mistake of telling a couple of my sister friends nun friends and that got that word got to the head nun and um and then that then she told the priests and uh so they they told me I was you know talking with the devil that, the, that you must be talking with right. the devil if um you if you're hearing voices in your head kind of thing and so they they wanted me to renounce that i was speaking with jesus with Yeshua, with jesus and i wouldn't do it and so they ended up torturing me to get me to renounce and and um uh, and i didn't they but they did what's called pressing put the board on top of me and put rocks on stones until I did renounce it. <clears throat> and I was praying, praying, praying uh, to to God and to Jesus to save me from this. And I ended up suffocating, dying that way. And so he helped me remember that I had to, and I want to, ooh, I feel that emotion. Um, yeah. That part of me was still there praying for, to be saved in the physical and um i needed to bring that in and could because i thought that i was abandoned by god right and abandoned by him so i had to bring that in to uh help me realize that i wasn't abandoned i was actually uh, brought home kind of thing or tried to bring you know there it was a, it was an experience i chose right 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 and then it was okay for me to to um move across and be you know be with him and with god and that i was never abandoned and it was just something i chose and it's time to come home kind of thing so that was that was pretty big for me yeah I mean, I, I, yeah because it, it's so interesting that the lessons themselves are to um bring you back to have a greater sense of faith in what you were right once once it was once upon it was frowned upon or you were shamed for and now you had this opportunity. Yeah. I guess you never lost the true connection, not the earthly connection that you were forced to, to create or have from your right. family members. Um, it's interesting. I had, I've had past lives myself. I've, I've, I've you know, had a specific, a significant past life that I speak about in different interviews myself. And I know that impact of living in the moment of trying to clear the energy from it, the remnants that are, that are left. And so from, from your perspective, were you cleared of that past life with, of the remnants of it? Did, were, did you get go through a healing from your contact with Jesus in this near death experience? Did you feel? Yes. Yes. He helped me bring her and help and helped her that part of me. And this is the work I do actually, and helped bring her and help that personality understand that she was never abandoned. She was never left behind. And this was something that she chose and that she just needed to, to, um, take her attention off of the earth plane and move her attention to the higher planes, just turn around type of thing and, and move her attention to the higher planes where he was there waiting for her. And, and the, every, everyone that she thought, thought had, had betrayed her was actually um, helping her with that experience she wanted to experience. And the people in the, in the experience were people that I thought betrayed me were people in my lifetime that I knew I recognized them in this life as well as people that were close to me. So what I've learned along in the last 20 years or so that people that we have experiences with that are the most challenging, um, that we feel are traumatic here are the ones that are usually the closest to us in our soul group that will do that. Yeah. Have you found that too? Well, I was, I was just going to, those were exactly my words. I was going to say the greatest, the greatest friction caused by people in our lives are the greatest teachers and they create a, create the sense of, 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 of a new creation for ourselves. So I always welcome yes. the difficult people into my life in terms of teaching me something about what I need to do to shift or change. Nice. And so as, as you just, as you just mentioned that particular thought, uh, when you had this experience and when, when you came to a place of, I guess, somewhat stability were you able to share it with anybody like a friend the sister or the the outside world or how long did it take to to pass this on i well i journaled everything that helped and i'm sitting and i communicate with him um but yeah my, my sister i was able to tell my sister some things um she 
she wasn't at that place where she could understand. Of course, no, not a lot of people can relate to your experiences when you're, I mean, luckily now um, a lot more people are talking about things and, right. and there's a lot that we can relate to sometimes. Um, but no, there wasn't a lot of people I could talk to. Um, I did, um, cause I was going through so many lifetimes and so much all the way back to Atlantis and beyond and galactic wars and things like that. I mean, yeah. I, reptilians you know in my room kind of thing and so i'm like i'm going crazy i'm going crazy you know right. and so <laughs> yeah. seeing gray beings you know that saved me from abuse as a child things like that or you know um so i'm going I, you know i'm thinking i'm nuts i'm going crazy so how many people do you talk to about that so right, right, right. Uh, i did find yeah i and my boyfriend at the time I couldn't really tell him he, he he didn't understand a lot of it I mean he tried but that wasn't in the cards for us uh, so I tried to talk to a counselor a regular counselor and she didn't uh, uh, so that didn't work and I found an intuitive counselor and um you know a psychic kind of a, a yes, counselor yes. and she was the only one I could talk to because she didn't it, it she understood well I, she had her own experiences for one thing and she didn't judge me on mine and she could relate i'm not going to say relate but she she helped me and put things in perspective in a um more um otherworldly and higher frequency spiritual kind of way yeah so i so i saw her for a little while until yeah. i was able to but my main counselor <laughs> was yeshua yeah it, it's interesting you you know you bring up uh yeshua and i've had i have a shaman per friend who's in terms of age-wise is mature is a, in a matured age had experiences of seeing a ship come down with yeshua and michael um in the amazon wow. uh was in wow. introduced to them met them saw his eyes looked into the eyes and uh were in contact with the elders. He was taken on the ship himself with, I guess, maybe Nordic, blonde-haired, uh, blue-eyed people who were in a company with Jesus. Uh, and so mm -hmm. through that situation, through that encounter, hearing him say that and hearing it from somebody else say it, uh, I was going to ask you in terms of your experience, which I know you've had as a child that I've heard in terms of your connection and being on a ship and the whole, the whole uh, package of all these different ingredients that add up to this this experience that you've had um so maybe you can just actually go back a little bit now to your experience with ufos and ets um and how that's relevant towards your healing and your i guess where you're at in terms of your your mindset sure sure um before I, I want to just share one little experience that I had when I, when Yeshua was uh, showing me when I walked with him, when he walked the planet as Jesus, as Yeshua, I had an experience where um, he was showing me, as he sh showed me a lot of, of when he walked the planet, where he's in a, in a market and, and I'm walking with him and, and people are clamoring around him, you know, master, save me, heal me, this, that, that, that and they're clamoring around and he's feeling overwhelmed because he walked the planet as a human right and then he's still and i can tell and i see he's showing me he's feeling very overwhelmed and i'm watching from back here a beam of light shoot down and pick him up and i see the ship i can see it but it's like in a cloud but I, he helps me see it pick <laughs> pick him up into the ship and wow. take him away from that experience and I see him sitting and meditating on the ship and calming himself and being in that space. And then they, and then when he's finished with, you know, he's calm then they bring him back down in a little bit, little ways in a different space, but in the same market and nobody's even remembers. what. Yeah. Happens. That's so interesting. So interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I assume, in, the pe in, I assume well, people weren't ready for the message that he was, that he was giving. And yeah. obviously it wasn't his time. He had to come in the form of a human form in his, in his character and what he looked like in order to draw people to his, you know, draw the attention to him, but more so, I guess the energy and the word of what he spoke was the, was the determining factor of people being able to accept or, or reject. 
a higher a higher sense of, of consciousness um right i also believe that his true teachings which are coming out you know have been coming out now I believe we're meant for these times and not may maybe meant for then that they were meant to be carried forward by a few and, and they're um, in whatever way it could be at that time. And of course, you know, if you, if you dig into, to that type, his message and, and the, um, the Bible and things like that, you'll see that it's been changed over the years and edited and, th and there's different versions too. And, some of the books were taken were not even included right, right. and um, so i believe that his message and his true teachings are for these times for the the shift we're going through and for us to be bring that that message forward that he came to show us because it um like you said sometimes if if um a, a, a prophet a teacher like yeshua comes to the comes to the planet it takes time for humanity human because we're in that this dense frequency it takes time for things right. to to grow to be um for the consciousness to understand it for our consciousness to to really get the what it what it's all about so i believe that that's why he came then for now it's just a little you know and it's been inserted in our consciousness since then or we've been understanding it since then we keep um, and we come back to, as we become wiser and wiser and we grow up the, um, in, yeah. you know, frequency that, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, to your previous question, yes, I started remember in my meditations, I started remembering my childhood uh, where I was abused as a child and I'm still unpacking a lot of what that was all about. And I'm finding it was more nefarious than what I thought, uh, and um, and so it seems like what I'm seeing is it's part of some program or um, there were, there was a lot more involved because I because I was seeing more than just the one person that I was that I saw the gist of the abuse the uh, family member and I'm and I'm like this doesn't make sense you know I don't understand this but now I'm start now I'm understanding more and more as I work through it and as um as I'm being um. Uh, uh, abused uh, I would see these little three little little gray beans or gray beans that look, look like small beans to me they're about the size I was because I, I was you know a young girl show up and then take me out of the experience and take me on a ship and heal my body and I can even smell the healing one they'd use on my body and uh and i have and i remember conversations with them later uh as i'm journaling all this stuff and um of being cloned and them having dna and having clones and i couldn't even say the word clone back then i couldn't even say it right, right, and because right. uh, it was just so what what are you talking about now i hear more and more people talking about their bodies being cloned in certain programs and so all this stuff that um, that I didn't understand that was coming to this that I was remembering people are talking about now. So so I do have I was having those types of memories and um, being on ships with them and having these conversations with different extraterrestrials. Also remembering Atlantis and dealing with uh, reptilian beings um, and. Um, and fight whoops sorry uh thought i turned that off and um fighting in the galactic wars that type of thing and how horrible that was having those types of memories and you know it was it was a lot quite a bit to um yeah take on how how was it enhanced enhanced your life this this information and it helps me remember who I am, who, who, uh, who, and what I am. That I, you know, as personally, and I believe that there's a lot of us here, many, many millions and millions and millions, and um, that we, and this is how I saw it the other day, because I actually live on the river. Speaking about water, right? And I was on, the, and I get a lot of inspiration on the water. That we've come from our future self, future to heal our past. 
That's what we, and I'm like, why do we keep saying we come back? We come back. Doesn't that mean we come back? We go back? <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And then I had this really strong inspiration that as we move up in frequency, we're in our future self. And so as we move down, we're in our past self. I'm like, huh. That is crazy. That yeah, makes yeah. kind of that kind of makes sense. So yeah, so we've come here to to um, correct. We've come to back to correct. Yeah. For instance, Atlantis. I feel like we feel have come full circle with Atlantis because there's a lot going on now that I see um, that has um, uh, that we need to correct that we didn't correct back then. It didn't. It got we got way out of out of balance. So now we're here to put things in balance again. And I feel like we've, we've reached, we've gone over the tipping point of bringing things back into balance. Uh, yeah. yeah. I had a, I had an out of body experience that was pretty profound where I met with what I realized was a council of mine where there was a couple of Pleiadians. They told me they were Pleiadians, a male and a female human <clears throat> and a big buff guy that I, that he was uh, that I got was Syrian and uh and a couple of um uh bald headed beings that um that were um well I felt were uh, not grays but kind of looked like a gray type of person a being and they were telling they were talking to me and this was about 20 years ago and they were telling me that I've come back to uh, I'm here to um, rectify at, what happened in Atlantis. And at that time, I didn't wasn't having the Atlantean memories or I didn't understand them. I said, what happened in Atlantis? And they just kind of look at me and look at each other like, let's just say it wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So that was. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a fascinating yeah. subject when, 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 once, you, once you go in the rabbit hole of opening yourself up to the different levels of consciousness. Um, there's always something to be found and there's always people to, to encounter who have an experience that they can share, such as yourself. Um, you also do psycho, uh, psycho pump spirit rescuing. Yes. Maybe you could just, just yes. elaborate on what that exactly is. Sure. I'm sure. Um, for, oh, wait, before I answer that, if I could go back, a thought came into my head when you asked sure. about how that benefits my life with remembering all this and going all the way back. I feel that it also helps us remember our true history because we have don't know our true history. And I, I feel that's very, very, very important because we pretty much everything we've been taught is a lie. What I've learned, okay? right, right, so right. what I understand. So I think that's really, really important to know our true history. Uh, so with psychopomp, yes, what I found is that um, when we die, and I feel like it's the same as kind of soul retrieval type of thing, when these parts of us get fragmented, if we die, if we die traumatically and normally, or if there's some reason why we don't accept that we, that um, we have left the physical body, because we don't really die, we just uh, transform, move into a different uh, space. And so... Sometimes, you know, there's lots of reasons why we won't take our attention off the earth plane. We want to stick around and it's okay to stick around. It's a choice, you know, for a little while or something like that. It doesn't mean if we don't, if we leave the earth plane and move into the higher planes that we can't still be with our family and, and be a help for them and things like that. Definitely. Because we are, we're always doing something in the higher planes. Always. We we don't know, don't ever stop experiencing and existing. And so, so what I've learned and I learned about it about 15 years ago when I heard a, a EVP, electronic voice phenomenon of a spirit who was still uh, living his life at, I was at a mediumship retreat um, in Washington on the Puget Sound. And there was a couple of gals there who did this type of work and got EVPs, spirit voices. And there was, and I even felt a gentleman that we were at a logging, uh, an old logging camp. We'd stay in these cabins, things like that. And then, and almost everyone there, we were mediums, and almost everyone there felt this one gentleman that kept moving around from house to house, trying to find a bed. Cause we were all, <laughs> we were in all the beds and we right, were sleeping right. in all the beds. Right. And he's like, and I felt him in our house too. And I'm like, what is this? He's, he's looking for a bed. And so there was other mediums there that felt him too. 
so the, a couple of mediums had worked with um, EVP and Spirit Rescue. And so they got his voice on EVP and told him that he had passed, that he doesn't need to stay there any longer. And he got it and he said, it's, and I heard, the, and on the voice, you can hear him say, it's true. And so they guided him and told him to turn around, guided him to the other side. And I just, I mean, I just burst out. I mean, just sobbed. It felt so emotional for me. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is people, we can really not know that we passed for some reason or want to, you know, stay on the earth plane or just because, because of emotional stuff, you know, trauma, right. depression, um, all kinds of reasons. Um, wanting to stay around uh, land, a house, you know, that we're attached to because we're not really taught how to die in the Western world. Right. Right. That's right. You, you know, yeah, we're not really taught. And so I uh, started doing that work and it's extremely rewarding. And I have so many voices on recorder. When I do this work, I have so many voices that uh, tons and tons, hundreds, if not thousands of voices that are saying thank you or um, the light, uh, home, um, peace. Yeah, I've, I've interviewed I've interviewed a yeah. person who created the machine, Ray For For Forestine, um, in New York State. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I interviewed okay. him, and I spoke with him. Wow. And he, yeah, he's been to Fort Ticonderoga, where the, the battles took place, and he hears the British speaking in the basement, and he actually he, he can hear the voice, the recording. So it's in, so interesting. Yeah, it's real. It, it's yeah. real. I actually have my guide's voice on EVP, too, yeah, talking to me. But what really got me going, too, is when I started doing EVPs, I would hear help help, help wow. so many times, help, help. Cause I've learned in the spirit world that they can, you know, they under, they can see who can, you know, communicate with them or, um, or get a sense of that or they know, cause they're, they're still looking at the earth plane. Their focus is still on the earth plane like ours is, you know, so it's, yeah, it's really rewarding work. Yeah, I can imagine. You also are the founder of the uh, Kamara Academy of Transformation. You know, the little yes. program that you run. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. That's dedicated to Yeshua uh, to um, help bring his his teachings in, in, onto the, uh, in the consciousness. So many of us are doing that. And um, I teach classes. I teach courses. And I also bring on other practitioners. And whoever is interested in um, teaching a course or um, joining the academy as a practitioner, you're welcome to contact me. I am accredited. The, the Academy is accredited through the International Association of Practitioners and uh, metaphysical practitioners. And uh, so, yeah, I enjoy it. I, um, it's rewarding. It's rewarding. Definitely. Thank yeah. you for, for all, both sides. <laughs> I understand that. Yes, yes, I understand. Um, yeah. If somebody wanted to reach out to you in terms of what the website itself, I'll put it down in the description, but maybe you could just uh, say it. Sure. Sure. My website is Sharon Sananda, um, uh, com, S H A R A O N S A N A N D A dot com. And my academy is Kumara Academy, K U M A R A Academy, A C A D E M Y dot com. Okay. I'll put that link down in the description. If you would, if you could leave Thank us, you. if you could leave us with a message on something you'd like to just leave the audience with that could be inspiring. Sure. Let's see. Uh, well, so much. One thing, um, and what Yesh was helped me remember, and I don't feel like we're really learning. I feel like we're remembering because we are, we are very powerful, immense beings full of light. And, uh, and I just want to let people know that you are never, ever, ever alone, ever. It may feel like it sometimes. And this too shall pass everything shall pass and um and that we do choose our experiences i know it's kind of hard to believe that sometimes for growth and the the more challenging experiences the more growth like you were saying adam yeah. also i do find that the brave it's the brave that choose challenging experiences and um you everyone that is watching this is very brave very brave 
for being here at this time and for going through what we're going through. And just remember that and honor yourself, honor how far you've come. And, um, and you're a beautiful, beautiful soul. And we're here to, to be love, basically, to experience yeah. it and, and be it. Yeah, and I want to thank you for your inspiration because um, it takes a person like yourself to be able to transmute an experience into words and then to be able to allow an audience or a group of people to then understand or have a better idea or at least to, to at least delve into the subject. And your authenticity and your ability to express yourself with the subject and what you've experienced is, is very interesting and inspiring to me. So I want to thank you. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. And thank yeah. you for the work you do, Dan, Adam. I mean, it's, we, uh, we need it for sure. Thank you. Bye -bye.